Hello, welcome back to Farmer's Wife Homestead. I'm Stacey if this is the first time we're meeting and I've got something really special for you today. Um, it's been in the works for a little while and I think you might actually enjoy it and I'm very keen to carry it on but we will get to that at the end of today's video. What we are also going to do is make uh, finish off making that mustard and we're going to make another recipe at the end um, as well. So to today's video. So a little while ago I got contacted by New Zealand Money Karma um, and she is obviously a New Zealand channel and she has um, been putting out videos for um, some time now and she is a budgeting channel. Not only a budgeting channel, she also sort of um, pops in a, a little bit of um, showing her veggie garden and, and um, just their general New Zealand life, Kiwi life and whatnot. So she does a lot of cash stuffing videos and, and that kind of thing, which as I've um, mentioned before, I absolutely love and I, I probably, I've always wanted to have um, a budgeting cash stuffing YouTube as well. So that, that may be in the cards um, at some point. But on to today's video, um, she emailed me and asked if I would um, look through her cupboards and look through her fridge and freezer with her and give her any ideas and tips that I may think of because she herself has been finding um, some of my videos really quite helpful. Um, I do believe that she has just started um, a new job and she has been working flat out like six, six days a week and stuff. And um, she's looking for ways of, um, you know, helping um, simplify her meal making and stuff like that to make things easier. Um, I have to say, going through the video, um, that I am absolutely amazed with your um, preparedness, your, um, you know, just, just in general, how well you have got everything sorted. So you made my job <laughs> particularly hard. And I do know that you wanted to um, have more recipes on lentils and things, but to be honest, I've only cooked with lentils a handful of times. Um, and if I probably put lentils in husband's food, he'd be going, oh, what's this? You know, but that's just him. Um, so I can't help you with um, recipes on lentils, but I have made quite a lot of notes and hope that you enjoy the notes that I make. All right, so enough gabbing from me. Um, what I'm going to do is um, play some of the video and then I will, um, you know, just share some notes throughout the video as well. All right, okay, let's get to it. Welcome to my kitchen. Okay, so what do we got? Plenty of butter, cheese, yeast, ginger, some tomato sauce, I've got more milk, um, and that is beetroot down there in that far jar, and then at the top I've got some sauerkraut, some beetroot, um, some fruit. And here, Jerusalem artichokes. A few cherry tomatoes, but tons more where they came from. And same in here, some sweet corn, carrots, cucumber. That's just lettuce. And there's plenty more of those things in the garden. All right, great look in your fridge. Um, nice and clean gosh <laughs> reminds me I've got to clean mine um, so yeah great we look into your um, fridge there um, some notes that I made is that um, you can store your butter in the freezer and that will just keep the butter at its peak um, you know peak freshness so um, yeah just pop it in the freezer as it is and in, in the paper that it that it is in and then as you want your butter you can just pull them out one at a time um, the beetroot juice that I spied in the fridge door, um, consider making um, some pickled eggs because um, you did say that you've got quite a lot of eggs. So I'm not sure if you have chickens or, or whatever, but um, with that leftover pickle juice, don't waste it. Um, make up pickled eggs. 
um, pickled eggs are really quite yummy. Um, so we will probably do something like that um, later on in next spring, spring for us anyway, um, because my girls are off the lay. Um, amazing produce, you know, the, the produce that you're getting out of the garden is beautiful and I'm very, very jealous. Um, so well done on getting, you know, lots of veggies and some fruit into um, your household. And some of it, it may even be foraged. Um, have you considered making your own baked beans? So do let me know if you've um, seen that video or whether you've even tried making it up. And apparently some of my viewers have um, been um, putting them into plastic containers and popping them in the freezer and then just grabbing them out of the freezer as they wish to have um, baked beans um, because dry beans um, are, are a really cheap um, resource, you know. And the ginger... Um, I'm not sure if you've seen how I do my uh, my garlic pucks. You can do the same with ginger. So if you find a good special on ginger, just give it a good grate and then just freeze little blobs of it. And therefore, you know how sometimes um, ginger starts to go all shrivelly? Um, the other thing that you can do is just pop it in the freezer just as it is and then just use a microplane or a grater and then grate it from frozen. Um, I've got mine just like that too. It's so those are two options for that. And I did spy that you had some yeast. Um, and it would be really good to get bulk yeast. Um, but I do spy some later on in the video. So um, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So yeah, fridge, brilliant. Awesome work. Let's go into the freezer. So that's just some freezer meals. Um spring roll stuff for the kids lunch, some brie, lots of old bananas, berries here, these are berries, and here I've got tofu, I've got cherries in this big container, um, sausages, so two packs of sausages there, there's nine sausages in each of those packs, some bacon pieces, and all of these are pestos. And then here, more sausages. Each pack of sausages always has nine. I've got blackberries. I've got two lots of mints there. And then some more mints underneath there. So corn silver side, sausages and mints is the meat that's in that one. Great freezer. Um, great to see that you um, are freezing down your cheese. Um, so when you find someone special, pop it in the freezer. Um, if you're going to freeze large blocks, um, it's best to, you know, grate it first because it does become quite crumbly. But you can still grate it after you um, take it out and pop it back in your fridge. So great one on freezing the cheese. Um, awesome to see that you've got some freezer meals in there. I'm sure that they are um, a godsend when you are busy. Um, and amazing to see all that pesto. Is that what was wrapped in the, the newspaper? So I'd love to know if you could maybe um, leave us a comment um, and answer a couple of questions for us down in the, um, in the comment section um, of how you froze that pesto. Corned beef. My favourite. For my birthday, I always make corned beef because I just, I love it. Love, love, love it. And I always make double the amount so that you can make corned beef hash the next day. So we are going to be doing that in a up and coming What's For Dinner episode. And um, look out for that because it's a great freeze meal to have or just to even just make it up fresh um, at the time. So that looked like a really nice big piece of um, um, corned beef there. Um, great use of your fridge freezer. Um, have you considered investing in a vacuum sealer to keep frozen um, frozen meat at its peak levels? Um, so you can grab them on special at Briscoe's for, for relatively good prices and, um, you know, maybe look at doing that um, to keep your meat at, you know, like as fresh as possible. And the pantry. So in there you've got normal oil, soya sauce, sesame oil, 
balsamic vinegar, sweet chili sauce and apple cider vinegar. Um, awesome range of oils and vinegars um, and soy sauce, all those types of things. If you've got all of those, then you've got a multitude of different um, meals that you can make with those. So that was a great range of um, oils and, um, you know, vinegars and, and um, sauces. So well done on that. And here I've just got flowers, wheat flour, plain flour, and self-raising flour. White rice, tons of that. So with your flour, if you're not going to keep it in a in a big glass jar or um, you know in something like a, a plastic container or anything, you can pop a dry bay leaf in the top, and that will help keep away any nasty bugs and things like that. And also, I see that you've got wholemeal flour and flour, just pl plain flour, which is awesome. And then you had self raising. So. What I would consider is buy your flour in a in a bigger amount and and not buy the self raising because um, any recipe that you have that has self raising flour, all you need to do is use plain flour and use one teaspoon of baking powder per cup. So that's one one less flour that you um, have to keep in the pantry and buy. Nice to see you've got a nice big container of rice. I've got the computer down here, so I'm watching as um, I'm making the, these little films. Um, yeah, great that um, you've got a big container of rice. Um, maybe you could consider um, making up a whole batch of rice and then freezing it down into packs, especially if you get yourself a vacuum sealer. Um, you can vacuum seal into little blocks and um, pop them in the freezer, and then you've got a really quick um, rice um, to use without having to, um, you know, boil it and whatnot. Hope that makes sense. And different kinds of beans, chickpeas, um, chana, and white beans. Those are yellow peas. These ones here are yellow peas. Um, I don't remember what those were when I got them at a bulk food store. I think they might be French green lentils. Got quinoa. Then you've got cornmeal, aborio rice, red lentils, popcorn. Um, what an amazing array of dried beans and legumes that you have. Um, so that's going to provide your family with so many healthy, affordable meals. So that was amazing to see. Um, yeah, and, um, and it's great to see that you're reusing jars. That's perfect. Um, and with some of those beans that you've got, you could make up a batch of cowboy beans as well. Um, so that's another recipe that I've been meaning to make and perhaps we'll do that for what's for dinner for another episode. So, um, and with your chickpeas, you could um, make up hum hummus. Not sure if you already make up hummus, but um, um, that will be another recipe that we will um, look at doing and possibly we might even make it up at the end of this video. Oh wow, look at that popcorn, the multicolored popcorn. I want to know, did you grow that yourself or did you buy it? And if you brought it, where did you get it from? Because um, that that looks so cool. And is it any different, like is the taste any different than the regular um, yellow, golden, um, orange popcorn that you can buy? Thanks. Always got tons of oats. We've got tons of potatoes at the moment. Lots of little onions. Also, I love the weaved baskets and your use in the pantry by storing your potatoes and your onions in there. Um, they are beautiful and I love that you use them in your pantry. Pumpkins. I have this big container of honey, so I'm trying to use more honey and less sugar. But that's not to say I'm not using sugar. So I've just got the normal salt and pepper, that's honey, Vegemite brown sugar, chocolate chips, LSA, some sultanas, coconut oil obviously, um, in the corner that is golden syrup and then next door to that is just desiccated coconut, always got tons of eggs, chia seeds, dates, those are sun-dried tomatoes, coriander seeds, Again, amazing that you are using um, and utilizing and reusing jars, 
um, for your storage it's a great way to cut back on weevils and pantry moth if you have a problem with that um, since I put everything into jars I've not had a problem and I am not l losing you know literally you know hundreds of dollars worth of um, stuff like I used to so reusing your jars is perfect for that even if you've got to just decant it into a whole heap of small jars at least it's it's a lot safer so yeah love the use of your jars and these are just little bits and bobs so I've got um, calendula um, onion weed flowers fennel seeds linseed this is just my mixed herbs that I make myself and that's plantain seed or dock seeds and awesome um, looks like you've been foraging you know you've got um, uh, onion weed flowers and you can actually um, pick all the bulbs of the onion weed as well and um, you had plantain and you had dock seeds I've got so many dock seeds in my vegetable garden at the moment um, not that you can class it as a garden um, but I'd love to know what you use your dock um, seeds for some leftover lasagna pasta powdered milk and in the back there is some tin tomatoes baked beans sardines and tuna yay <laughs> milk powder yes <laughs> um, and also great to see um, a, a nice range of tinned goods that, um, in that part of the video as well cupboard I have got jams and preserves and I've got some tin tomatoes all these other things are things that are in the jars in the kitchen um, can I suggest um, getting some buckets and I see that you do have some stuff stored in buckets but getting some 20 litre buckets from either Bunnings or um, Mitre 10 or any other place where you can get buckets from and popping all those um, you know open dried goods into one bucket you don't have to have a bucket for everything uh, you know every type of thing just like chuck it all in one bucket and um, that will make sure that it keeps it a lot fresher as well um, so that would be one thing that I would suggest with that down here I've got coconut cream more tinned fish kaffir lime leaves and pad thai um, and also with the um, the pad thai and any other little jars of curry paste now I used to um, you know make up a curry and I'm the only one that eats curry in here so I'd make up a curry and then the jar's got to be used up within I don't know if it's seven days or a month or whatever and half the time I would not make a curry again so what I do now is when I make up a curry is I have frozen down little curry pucks so whenever I want to make red curry I've got that curry now so you could do that with the pad thai um, because I don't know you wouldn't normally use the whole jar so yeah those little pucks are coming in really good handy tons of tomatoes some more tuna fruit and this is kind of just more of the same I've got pineapple I've got some beans this here is beetroot. Um, All right, I spied some big blocks of yeast. So I said I'd come back to that, and it's the exact same yeast that I use, which I think it's it's Barker's or ba Bakel's or something like that. Um, and um, I saw that you had two of them in behind, I think it was behind onions. Um, pop those into the freezer because they will stay a lot fresher. So... Just chuck them in the freezer and you can use those when they're past their date for forever and ever. I've actually um, belonged to a few different bread groups and one man said that he used 21 year old yeast. So yeah, pop it in the freezer just as it is and then as you need it, decant it into a big jar um, and then pop it in the fridge and as I said it lasts for a long long time. So great use of um, buying yeast in bulk because when you buy it in the small containers um, if you're somebody that enjoys using yeast and making um, bread products with your yeast, um, definitely source um, bulk. More LSA. I've got some couscous in the back. And some noodles. 
and I also have here some rice paper and up the top there also I do have some sushi um, wraps and then down here so I've got more pasta more tin tomatoes I love that you've got heaps of jars um, heaps of tinned tomatoes it's just one thing that um, is really good to have in the pantry because you can make so many things from it you can make your condiments um, you know you can um, just yeah try to keep quite a few um, tins of tomatoes in your pantry because they last for a long time um, in this little clip just again um, consider popping all that beautiful pasta into a 20 litre container um, just to help keep it fresh because you can get um, weevils can burrow into your plastic bags so here I've got some of my preserves which ideally I don't want to use until it's winter time but I've got mango chutney, I've got some kiwi fruit chutney and over there I've got tomato relish and down there is tomato relish and some beetroot relish as well. Oh, look at all those beautiful beautiful preserves, well done and I love that you are reusing your jars, just yeah I'm sure your family will enjoy all of those in the winter time that's um, fast approaching inside the spice drawer and you can kind of see most of what we have here this is some kind of like Mexican spice garam masala, coriander, turmeric, curry hot paprika that's some mustard seeds back there and some caraway seeds and then here ginger, ground cloves, cinnamon mixed spice, cayenne pepper, some normal pepper um, beef stock, veggie stock, chipotle, cinnamon sticks, and I don't know what this is. Someone's brought that to our house and I haven't chucked it away because I don't like to be wasteful, but I don't know what I would use it for. I'm probably, no, I know I'm going to butcher it, but Raz El, Raz El Harit, Moroccan spice. Um, yeah, basically it's um, a mixture of Moroccan spices with cumin, ginger, um, coriander seeds, all, all the lovely Moroccan flavours. Um, so you can use that and make um, Moroccan lamb um, and ch uh, use chickpeas with it and I serve it on couscous. Um, I've made that recipe for years, my kids absolutely love it. Um, but with the price of lamb, I don't make it very often anymore. Um, but if it's something that you would like me to make in a what's for dinner episode, let me know and we will do that. And you can also make a vegetarian chickpea um, Moroccan dish. Um, so I'd use like pumpkin and you could put apricots in there and onions and um, maybe some carrots. Just some really good root vegetable um, and make, um, you know, use some of that spice, spice mix. So there's two different ideas. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing the Moroccan lamb with chickpeas and apricots on couscous. And this here is mustard. We definitely have plenty of chard. We have plenty of lettuce and plenty of carrots in different spots. We have spring onion and always forests of kale. And a great look into your garden. It's um, you know we're in autumn now, so I'm sure a lot of the garden is winding down. But I have seen some of your videos um, before showing your garden, and you've got a beautiful garden. So well done on getting those things to supplement your income. All right, thank you, New Zealand Money Karma, for um, letting us all have a look into your pantry and the way that you organise things. As I said at the start, um, I think you're doing an amazing job. And thank you for having me in your home today, kind of, <laughs> or all of us in your home today. Um, we, we, I'm sure, really appreciate that you um, put this together. Now, if you are interested in um, me doing the same thing in your home, I'd be very, very keen to make this a series. And I will pop a email in the description if you are interested in doing the same thing. Email me. Um, I'll have it in the description which email so it won't be the farmer's wife homestead it'll be something else and um, but I'll make that very clear and you can send me an email if you're interested in me making a video with you um, 
something similar like, like this. I will leave um, New Zealand Money Karma's um, channel down below in the description as well. So if you are interested in seeing some more Kiwi content, and <clears throat> I'm all for helping out other Kiwis who are, um, you know, trying to do the same thing um, on YouTube. It's extremely hard to get into the New Zealand um, scene of YouTube. Um, and if anybody else, of course, wants to to follow her channel, it's really a really nice channel. And um, yeah, go over and show her some love and leave a comment and let her know that you've um, popped on over from um, Farmer's Wife Homestead. Alright, so let's get to making this mustard. I'm going to put my hair up and grab my penny and we might actually make up a quick um, hummus as well. Oh, penny. Okay, let's check on this mustard seeds. Right, all the liquid is absorbed. And it's filled the jar, so that's great. A try a couple. Mm. Mm, yum. Right. So what we're going to do now, I don't know why I'm putting the lid on. So, um, you're going to pop this into your food food processor, and we're just going to whiz it up. All right. So I'm going to pop you down to my thermomix, and that's going to whiz up the mustard. Um, I have decided that I won't do the hummus today because I want to um, make um, a few different types and I think this video would end up being too long. So we'll just finish off this mustard and um, look out for another video on hummus. So yeah, so I'm just going to chuck that all into my Thermomix, you pop it into your food processor and I've got um, a little bit of cold water and I've got a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar on the side just to thin it down um, as we go along. Just gonna pop that all in there. That beautiful turmeric. tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to start with. Pop the lid on and just blend it to the consistency that you want. tablespoon of water and apple cider again just to thin it down a little more. Might add some salt. Just a little bit of salt as well. I'm going to blitz that again. First time I've used the Thermomix to <coughs> blend it. <coughs> Boy, does it do a good job. So I still want that a little more blended, but I am going to just try a little bit first. Whoa, that's so hot. It will mellow down though. I'm going to add some more water. And 
more honey. Just play around with your flavours. And just a little bit more salt. Sorry, I may have been filming that and you haven't been able to see anything. But this is the consistency now. And that's perfect for what I want. Super spicy. I'm just going to chuck it straight back into this jar. Now I'm going to get another smaller jar for the rest of this mustard. Now the trick with the mustard is to, when you taste it, it's going to taste very vinegary and very hot and, and you're going to go, oh, don't like it. it. It is really good to keep it in the fridge for at least a month. Of course you can eat it, you know, straight away if you wanted to. But it just needs time to settle and it needs time to mellow out. Um, so yeah, this will keep in the fridge for indefinitely. Um, it doesn't last that long for me. I'm the only one that uses mustard, but um, yeah. So that's just a nice yellow mustard. And of course, if you use different um, the different seeds, you get different tastes um, and different heat. But that's just a quick way of making mustard, your own mustard. So I like to pop. Um, what it is and the date so this is my last one um, so I made this July last year and I've got just that much left and it's still absolutely perfect and it's not so pungent now so it really does need that time just to, to mellow out and settle in the fridge all right so I'm going to jar up this other one and then we'll be done so I hope you enjoyed making the mustard and I really hope you enjoyed um, watching this different type of um, video um, going around somebody else's um, pantry etc so as I said in the description there will be a new email address it will um, be farmer's wife something um, and if you are interested in doing the same sort of thing just pop me an email and um, we can go over the details but I reckon it'd be really cool to I've got subscribers from all over the world and I reckon it'd be really cool if we make this a series and we get to see um, how other people, you know, keep their pantries and different products and stuff like that. So I'm really super excited for it. Once again, thank you to New Zealand Money Karma for joining me in today's episode and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.